In rural southern Illinois, a toy company has started making dolls that make extremely realistic sounds for expectant mothers. But according to the stories, the dolls were crying all the time after the mothers gave birth. Normally, it was possible to silence the crying sound of the doll by shaking, but after the birth, it started to be necessary to shake and hit the toys hard to silence them. Day by day, the violence needed to silence the toys increased. Eventually, when the dolls could not be silenced, the parents had to bang the dolls against the wall in hopes of breaking the mechanism in the doll's head to get rid of the noise. In many cases, neighbors called the police to report child abuse in response to these events. When the police arrived at the scene, they found parts of the baby's organs on the walls and floors that were splattered with blood. The mothers, on the other hand, could not understand why the police had come and said that all they did was bang the wall to silence the stupid toys, on the other hand, they were stroking the empty swaddle in the shape of a baby on their laps. A man is forced to go to Bulgaria for work. While entering his hotel, his eyes are fixed on a room outside. He comes to the lobby and asks for a room, but says he will be happy if they give him the room he sees from the outside. The woman in the lobby says that that room has been closed for years and that she can give the room next to it instead. The man agrees and goes to his room. While changing, he realizes that there is a small hole in the wall that sees the room he wants. When he looks through the hole, he sees a woman in a wedding dress inside. Curious, she goes to bed. He wakes up, does his business, and returns to the hotel in the evening. When he returns to the hotel, he remembers the next room and looks again through the hole. This time, instead of inside the room, he sees something motionless red. He thinks that the people in the next room noticed the hole and closed it. Feeling very embarrassed, the man goes down to the lobby to apologize to those in the next room and find out who they are. He tells the incident to the woman in the lobby and the woman says, A long time ago, a couple came to our hotel for their honeymoon and they took that room. That night the groom killed the bride. It is said that the ghost of the bride is still there after this incident, and that the red eyes were seen by others who came to that room. That evening, my friend Ellen and I decided to watch a documentary. My cousin had a huge box of old documentaries from his deceased great-grandfather. We started tearing the box but we couldn't find an interesting documentary. When the last box was empty, my hand touched a height on the right side of the cardboard box. Something seemed to be stuck between two cardboards on the right side of the box. I tore up the box and looked at the height. It was a CD case. It read Life of the Dead, an ordinary documentary, on it. My friend was surprised. Because, he said, he knew this great archive as its name and he had never seen such a documentary before. It was our first time watching this strange documentary for both of us. I opened the box. Inside was a black CD with the front side. We went in front of the TV. Ellen had opened the CD player and was asking me to insert the CD. I was undecided about it because I was afraid of being afraid. Being afraid of being afraid is a very strange feeling. It's hard to even explain. At that moment, Ellen grabbed the CD from my hand and inserted it into the device. You're not afraid of this stupid thing, are you? He was brave. But I know very well that too much courage is not good. The documentary has begun. When we looked at the duration, we were surprised. It was a short three-minute documentary. Maybe the rest of it was broken. We would have to wait to find out. Ellen pressed the play button on the remote and the documentary began. 
It was a scary documentary, as I expected. Ellen just stared at the screen. Graves and corpses appeared on the screen in the form of photographs. My heart would explode. Even Ellen wasn't brave enough. At thirty seconds, Ellen took the remote to turn it off, when a voice began to speak. The dead are not as dead as you think. When they die, they continue to exist in other dimensions of life. A dead man can talk to you if he wants to, it was really silly. Ellen couldn't stand this bullshit because she hung up. It was a disgusting documentary. I'm going to W.C. When Ellen went to the bathroom, I was alone in the room. My eyes fell on the clock. It was 8.20 a.m. Minutes passed and Ellen did not return from the washroom. Curious, I followed behind. When I entered the bathroom, Ellen was lying on the floor. There was no wound or blood. I was shocked. Frightened, I touched Ellen. It was as cold as an ice tank. I checked his pulse. He wasn't throwing. I was so scared. I called the ambulance and asked for help. They put Ellen in the ambulance and me with her. A short time later, I was in the hospital crying over Ellen, who was wearing a white sheet. Meanwhile, the specialist who examined the body came to me and started talking. When did you find this body? This person has been dead for at least three days. That's when that disgusting voice echoed in my brain. A dead, if he wants, he can talk to you. Bedtime should have been a happy memory for a tired child. For me, it was like a nightmare. Although some children complained about going to bed without watching TV or playing games, the night was a complete nightmare for me. It still is in the back of my mind. As someone who has learned physics, I can't explain exactly what happened to me. But I can say that I felt exactly fear. It was the greatest fear I've ever really felt in my life. Nothing can equal that. Now I'll tell you as much as I can. I don't remember exactly when it started, but I think my anxiety about falling asleep started when I had my own room. I was eight at the time and until then, I was sharing my room with my older brother. Since he was five years older than me, he asked for his own room and I was left with a room at the back of the house. It was a small, narrow room. There was enough room in the room for the bed and a few small drawers. I wasn't complaining because I knew that even at that age we didn't have a large house. My brother was given a new bed. I slept in the bunk we shared in the past. Although I was a little afraid to sleep on my own, the idea of sleeping on the top bunk excited me. From the very first night, a strange uneasiness was creeping from the back of my memory. I got up in bed and looked at my toys, which were scattered on the green carpet below. When I realized there was nothing on the lower bunk, I pulled the duvet over me and slept with the confidence of the television my father was watching from downstairs. When you wake up for something moving from a deep sleep, it takes a few seconds to realize what it is. When the sleep fog lifts, everything is illuminated. Something was moving, there was no doubt about it. At first, I did not understand what was happening. Everything was dark, almost pitch black. Two thoughts immediately occurred to me. The first was that my parents were in their beds, because there was no sound or light. My second thought turned into a sound. The sound that woke me up. The sound was recognizable when the last sleep webs in my mind were gone. The bed beneath me was creaking. It was as if someone was looking for a comfortable position. I wonder if the sound was something I imagined. Or was my cat trying to lie down in the bed? At that moment I looked at my door and it was closed. 
Maybe my cat had come in when my mom opened the door to check on me? Yes, it should have. I turned my face to the wall and tried to sleep. As soon as I returned, the noise below stopped. I think I had disturbed my cat. But I quickly realized that the visitor downstairs was something more insidious than my cat. All of a sudden, the thing below started to spin on the bed like crazy. It was like someone was having a tantrum. Fear grabbed me. My eyes opened wide with fear and started to get wet. I cried. I called my mother, as every little child does. There was movement at the other end of the house. After shouting, the thing below went crazy and shook the bed as if there was an earthquake. I chose to stay in my bed instead of going downstairs. It felt like an endless time waiting for them. The door finally opened. Meanwhile, the bed downstairs was completely empty. While I was crying, my mother was trying to calm me down. I couldn't tell my mother why I was afraid because of the fear. I had a feeling that if I talked about her, she would come back. My mother lay in the bed downstairs and said she would stay there until morning. But I could hardly sleep at night. The next morning I wanted to go everywhere except that room. It was a Saturday morning. I was playing with my friends in the garden. There were many bushes and tall trees in the garden. So we felt like we were having an adventure on an exotic island. While I was playing with my friends, my eyes drifted to the window of my room. It was as if he was watching me in the morning. When I was alone at night, he was filled with anger and gave me nightmares. Strange as it may sound, when they let me back into the room, I didn't object. I had no proof anyway. I climbed onto my top bunk and went to bed. At night, while I was lying motionless with fear, my heartbeat accelerated. There were crackles coming from below again. This time, a thought began to circulate in my mind. Ghost. After a while, the crackles below gave way to breathing. I could imagine his chest heaving. The house was quiet again. The breathing continued. I wanted him to leave. I wanted him to leave me alone. I lay there in silence. What did she want? Then something really frightened me. He moved. It was different from his previous movements. Like an animal. Undoubtedly. I was lying down. My eyes filled with tears. My throat started to burn. This fear was indescribable. I didn't think there was such a fear. But I was wrong. I was wondering what it looked like. Then he hit the wood with great force. Now I started to cry. My mother came again and hugged me. She asked me what happened. I said the same thing again. Nightmare. These strange events continued for weeks. Every night he would wake up to the crunching of the bed, the bed would shake wildly, it would be over when my mother came. Every evening my mother would lie downstairs. She didn't know what was going on. Most nights I would say I was sick and stay with my family. I didn't want to be alone with that thing at night. For some reason, this thing never appeared when my mother was with me. The same could be said for my father. But it was very difficult to wake him from his sleep. After a few months, I was now used to my night visitor. Don't think of it as a friendship. I just accepted it. The days would get harder. My grandfather had fallen ill. He was going to die. My mother was starting to stay with him. I immediately ran home that day and put all my stuff on the downstairs bed. I didn't want him to come there. When it got dark, I lay on my bed. Knowing that my mother wasn't home. I didn't know what to do. 
Unfortunately, tonight was the scariest one. I woke up slowly. The room was dark. There was no sound. No breathing, no squeaking, nothing. The room was lifeless. Lifeless, but not empty. The night visitor wasn't in the lower bed. He was in my bed. I opened my mouth to scream, but I couldn't say anything. I stood still. If I couldn't scream, he shouldn't have known I was awake. I didn't see it, but I felt it. It was standing at the end of my duvet. I will never forget the weight I felt. If we were in the summer, there would be some light. But in the winter there was no light at all. So I was lying in pitch black. Sometimes fear takes hold of you. Pure fear. I should have gotten out of bed. Just then I remembered the cross in my hand. But it was gone. Without the cross, all hope was gone. Even at that age, I knew about death and was afraid. If I stayed in bed, I would die. I should have escaped. But what if he was faster than me? Could I land without disturbing him? When I tried to stand up and realized that he wasn't moving, strange thoughts came to my mind. What if he's sleeping? Maybe he was playing games with me. Maybe he was waiting for me to wake up like an animal catching its prey? I tried to breathe in the slowest way. With all my courage, I slowly started to lift the duvet off me. Just then, my hand hit it. I started to tremble all over with fear. He didn't do anything. He looked dead. I wanted to touch his face. I was very curious about him until today. God, he moved. He moved and grabbed me. Tears filled my eyes. I wanted to cry. But I couldn't. When I looked at the wall, I saw that it was standing like a spider on the wall, not on me. He suddenly squeezed me harder. It was like he realized I was trying to escape his hand. He started pulling me against the wall. I started fighting for my life. I was trying to get away, but it was too strong for me. I started crying. Screaming. But no one came. I understood why he was trying to pick me up right away. Daylight was coming up. He quickly pulled me into his chest. I felt his breath. It was as cold as ice. As the sun rose, the room was filled with light. He put his claws on my neck. And took my life from me. I woke up to see my father making me breakfast. I had survived the scariest night of my life. Weeks passed without any incidents. We changed the bed back to normal and moved it to the opposite side. We replaced the old bunk bed with furniture. One night I woke up to strange noises. The furniture in the place where the bunk used to stand was shaking like crazy and there was a strange hum coming from the wall. I've never told this story to anyone before. To this day, I still can't sleep with my bed on the wall. Maybe you can call it imagination, but I can only tell you this. The other year they gave me a new room, and my parents made it their bedroom. They lasted ten days. On the eleventh day, we moved from the house. I'm staying at my friend's house, here's why. Photo 1, I moved into this house about a year ago. The former homeowners built it around 2000s and moved to India two years ago. The photo above is a photo of the bedroom. Then we found this. Photo 2, while joking with my brother, I pushed him on the shelf. As she fell, she returned to the shelf with him. We thought the shelf was fixed to the wall. Photo 3, here we came across the fucking twisty stairs. Then we went downstairs, bad idea. 
Photo 4. This is what it looks like when viewed from below. As if it had no purpose, right? Photo 5. Halfway there is such a gap, if you go down. Photo 6. You will find these. Someone lives in our walls. On our walls. These are my Halloween candies. Someone broke into my room, took these from my bag, and brought them here. About 30 seconds after we took this photo, we realized what was going on and got out of here. Photo 6. These must be theirs. This elephant was hiding under the blanket. Photo 7. We also found this key. We have no idea which lock it opens. Photo 8. So is this fucking toy. These little bastards are creepy. Photo 9. Sorry to take this photo with a potato. But I shot the best I could under these conditions. I'll call the police and let you know if anything comes up.